Uh, well, we, you know, we started, we had a plan from the outset to sort of build this framework uh, into the future, you know, because the concept of the show was to uh, posit, you know, an alternate history and a future where the space program never ended. It sort of required that you uh, move the show out of the 1970s. You know, if, you, if it started in 69 and just did like a year a season, the program would just not change that much over time. So we knew right away that the show had to be much more ambitious and start jumping, you know, decades in between seasons. And once you made that decision, then it was, okay, we better sit back first and look at the, the overall plan and what's the big framework going forward. And so we laid out sort of an idea of what each of these seasons were and, you know, sort of detailed them out more or less you know, in different ways, what was going to define that year and what was going to define the, the next season and so on. Um, but the relationship between the audience has been great. It hasn't really changed the story that we uh, set out to tell and each year we've kind of executed the plan that we had at the outset and sort of evolved it along the way. But it's been really great and gratifying, you know, that people are starting to find the show and it's building and success and, and momentum along the way. You know, it's, it, it is about pace and there's also, it's about rhythm, you know, to, to a show, within a show and, and the show overall in the season. And a lot of that has to do with editorial and you're sort of taking the audience to places and you can't uh, dial it up all the time. You have to know when to slow down, you know, have to know when to quicken the pace. And as we approach sort of each season, uh, we talk about, you know, what's the rhythm of this, of this season? What, where do we want to start the story this year? Where do we end the story this year? And it's, it's, it's an organic process that changes a lot uh, over time. You know, the, the fundamental work of how the show is, is developed is, is really, you know, done in the writer's room. You know, we have a, a tremendous staff of writers that work very hard on this and, and give it their all and really, and one of, one of them is here right now, Sabrina. Two, oh, two, sorry, there's two. Two of the writers are here, Eric Phillips and Sabrina Almeida are both here. Also our researcher, Erica Hatfi, from For All Mankind. Um, uh, and you know, a large part of the, what the work we do is the work that they do, that sits in, the, in these rooms and figures out and breaks stories over and over again. Um, so yeah, just how the Space Hotel just came out of these discussions sitting around the writer's room, really. Well, you know, the last two episodes are, um, a lot's gonna happen. <laughs> there's, some, there's some fairly seismic events that are gonna happen in the For All Mankind universe in the last couple, and um, uh, they, they will propel us in ways large and small into, into season four. That's really all I can tell you. I really wanted to do work in television in, in a real way, in an immersed way. Um, and having said that, I approached it um, like I was sort of stretching out a movie um, in many ways. Like I could tell a movie over the span of 10 hours. And instead, I think what I realized after season one is that I was telling lots of mini movies, um, like a mini movie each episode that built to a larger story. Um, and so that was the first lesson I think I learned and it was just in, in, in adapting to this new format. Um, even though I was a fan, I'd never been inside it and as a writer you have to be inside something to sort of learn how to speak it. And the first season I spent my time really Building, sort of nurturing these characters um, with a little more, with a lot more patience than I would have um, the time to do in, in 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 a movie. This was really about you know America and a lot of other countries have occupied other countries around the world, and you rarely see on a big stage the perspective of the occupied peoples. And so I thought this was an opportunity to do that in a science fiction way where the earth is the occupied peoples. Um, so at any rate, I just was interested to play on an action standpoint and then explore on a character standpoint um, what we look like in the face of um, possible extinction. Rob had this idea to write this workplace comedy that we partnered with Ubisoft to make and we kind of made it in this complete vacuum. Um, Apple didn't even have their streaming service live at that time. We finished the first season and I think five months went by before they were able to put it up anywhere. So we were sitting on it for quite a while and I think we just got like a little bored and we were like, 
I want to show it to somebody. <laughs> like, I think somebody, because with comedy, you know, you want to hear somebody <coughs> laugh at it. So, um, so yeah, Rob just started inviting um, journalists over so that we could watch them watch it. I think we started out thinking that it would be a hard comedy, and we found out in the first season that um, the room had, or the, the, the show had more legs than that. It, it kind of took us, we did the one-off episode in the first season, um, which was a sort of mini movie that we stuck into the middle, and it was really earnest and kind of dramatic in parts and uh, had a completely different cast than our main cast, which is a, a no-no when you're writing a workplace comedy. Um, and we, people loved it. And, um, and so we realized like, oh, maybe they're willing to take a journey with us to like slip out of the workplace comedy a little bit more. So in second season, we experimented, um, you know, the pandemic hit and we made an episode, a quarantine episode filmed all in our own houses. Hi, thank you. Um, and in it, there is a solid minute of a woman crying. And I was like, ooh, this is you know, heavy for a workplace comedy. But I think that what happened was our work, at that time, our workplaces as a culture became very dramatic. And uh, so we wanted to represent for people like how it was feeling for us to be removed from each other. And be so we moved into a place of the show where we're not afraid to do things that are a little bit more dramatic and heartfelt, and so that's been a bit of a change, yeah. Well, you know, there, there was a season that came before me that had, had done some level of building out the world, and we also had a, uh, you know, a wonderful team uh, led by one of our producers, Joe Strecce, who is blind, um, who kind of were there to really, you know, when, when, we would when we would design a set or when we would write a sequence, we'd first sit down with Joe and say, walk us through this. You know, how would this work? How would, how would a city full of blind people work? How would they have built roads? And how would they have gotten their supplies in? And, and so there was a lot of sort of spending time with Joe and getting his feedback. You know, simple things like how he gets across a room to how he walks outside and can make certain echolocating sounds and know where the mountain ranges are. And, and so we would start from there and, and build out. The, the decision to end with season three was um, a function of a number of factors. The first thing was the pandemic shut us down for five months while we were shooting season two. Um, and so right away, um, actors and writers and, and everybody involved in the show has been on the show longer than they anticipated. Um, and in our case with Jason, because he had certain commitments beyond it that um, we're not going to slide their dates. What became tricky was, we, you know, we did some time figuring out, you know, how we would shoot a season if we only had him part of the time, if we had to shoot it between, you know, at the beginning, uh, shoot part of the season, then send him off to do a movie and then, you know, come back and do the second half. And in the end, every version we thought about um, felt like we'd have to design a show that was less about Baba Voss. Um, which is his character, and, and to us, you know, the heart and soul of the show was this man trying to protect his family, and I didn't see, it felt like it would be compromised anyway moving forward, and so we all talked about it and decided, you know, we have this opportunity to do a really full season three, let's really take the story to its conclusion.